It is estimated that the global energy demand increases 48% by 2040. The most of this growth is due to the countries that are not listed in the Organization for Economic Cooperation and Development OECD, including China and India. Renewables and nuclear power respectively by an average 2.6% and 2.3% growth per year through 2040 are the fastest growing energy sources over this period. Although renewables are projected to grow faster than fossil fuels, non-renewables still account for more than 75% of world energy consumption by 2040. During this period, coal is the slowest growing energy source increasing by 0.6% per annum through 2040. China, the United States, and India are the most coal consumers which together are considered for more than 70% of global coal consumption. Approximately one-third of the total U.S. coal power plants 102 gigawatt have been terminated and it is projected that 17 gigawatts more will be retired by 2025 thanks to the support of states policies and federal tax credits the renewables could completely retire the coal-fired power generation by 2030 It is expected that global crude oil and natural gas reservoirs will run out in less than 60 years, and renewables will be the most important source of energy in the next century. Carbon dioxide, CO2, methane, CH4, nitrous oxide, N2O, and fluorinat gases, F gases, are the most abundant greenhouse gases in the atmosphere. Approximately 30 billion tons of CO2 are emitted to the atmosphere annually due to human activities essentially by fossil fuel and wood burning. Although the preventive role of CO2 for the Earth, from space frozen balls, is inevitable, the rising rate of droughts, storms and floods, and global warming are the substantial consequences of high rates of CO2 production. The heat radiation from the Earth's surface can be trapped by greenhouse gases in the atmosphere, and global warming is the direct consequence of the greenhouse gases. The period that a kilogram of gas remains in the atmosphere before removing by chemical reaction is the atmospheric lifetime of that gas. The lifetimes of CH4 and CO2 are approximately 12 and 200 years, respectively. The anthropogenic CO2 emission has raised sharply during the last 50 years. Because of that, the global temperature has recently increased 0.3 to 0.6 degrees centigrade. Therefore, the sea levels have raised 10 to 20 centimeters during the last century, due to the melting of the glaciers and polar ice caps. The CO2 levels which were 200 parts per million, 
ppm during the ice ages, raised to 280 ppm during the warm interglacial periods, and due to anthropogenic activities, its level surpassed 400 ppm in 2013. This significant increase in CO2 level indicates a notable constant relationship with fossil fuel consumption, in which it is premised that approximately 60% of fossil fuel emissions stay in the air. Two main anthropogenic sources of greenhouse emissions are oil and gas-fired power plants and transportation, including road, rail, sea, and air transport. The other important contributor to greenhouse gas emissions is fossil fuel combustion in manufacturing industries. The energy used industries, such as the iron and steel manufacturers, or chemical factories, and households in the form of fuel combustion for domestic heating, are the main sources of greenhouse gas emissions. If the consumption of fossil fuels continues at the current rate, the CO2 level will exceed 1,500 ppm over the next few centuries. In that circumstances, the atmosphere would not rebound even tens of thousands of years into the future. In fact, energy and environmental policies play a crucial role in the future of the climate, In 2015, representatives of almost 200 countries gathered in Paris to discuss this crucial issue, and find a solution for global warming. Based on the Paris Agreement, decarbonization of the energy systems is vital to limit global temperature rises, to within 2 degrees centigrade of pre-industrial levels, and to pursue efforts to further limit the increase to 1.5 degrees centigrade. To limit global warming to 1.5 degrees centigrade, the net zero CO2 emissions target should be achieved by the year 2050, which requires decarbonization of fossil fuel and electricity, energy demand reduction, and greater levels of electrification and complementary CO2 removal activities. Shifting from fossil fuel based energy generation to renewables is still the best way to reduce greenhouse gas emissions and control global warming.